Elderly Leonid was a veteran of the war in Afghanistan. He was driving his Oka car on the highway, visiting and reminiscing about the past. With age, he often indulged in deepening memories. He had seen a lot in life, both good and bad. But what pleased him was that the warm moments outweighed the rest. The man couldn't remember his parents and was raised in an orphanage until he came of age. The services there were good, and back then, everything was well organized. Regular inspections were conducted, just as they should be. Children were allowed to express themselves through various activities. Leonid was passionate about sports, and everything came easily to him, especially playing football with the other kids. He had excellent health and stamina, and his talent did not go unnoticed. He was sent to competitions, where he returned with prize-winning placements. His hometown orphanage celebrated him and organized festive tea parties. After coming of age, Leonid left the orphanage and immediately enlisted for military service. He wasn't afraid and didn't try to avoid the army, considering it a duty to the nation. At that time, military service was not considered shameful and no one hid from the draft board. On the contrary, conscription was seen as a prestigious occupation. Through the draft, Leonid was assigned to the 104th Vitebsk Division. This division was one of the first to be deployed to Afghanistan during the conflict. The young recruits were not prepared for such circumstances, but Leonid fought bravely and fearlessly, never hiding behind his comrades. On the contrary, he forged strong bonds with loyal friends, upon whom he could rely and even sacrifice his life. A month before his demobilization, all the paratroopers were excited about the thought of returning home, but their unit unexpectedly fell into an ambush. They were escorting a convoy of military vehicles through a mountain pass and never expected to be caught in a trap. The enemy was cunning and ruthless. They had to quickly adjust and listen to the commander's clear orders. Many of their comrades in arms perished before their eyes at the hands of the enemy. It was difficult for Leonid to recall those events without tears. His chest still burned, just like back then. Those who survived suffered wounds of varying severity. Leonid was also hit by shrapnel, resulting in the loss of both his legs. Despite the efforts of doctors in the hospital, they couldn't restore his limbs. Leonid endured a difficult rehabilitation process. He couldn't come to terms with the loss of both legs. How could such a thing happen? A young lad, still inexperienced, left crippled for life. Leonid couldn't fathom how he would go on living. He didn't have any family either. Various thoughts crossed his mind, and soon the most terrifying ones no longer scared him. The young nurse Marina who cared for Leonid, saw it in his eyes when he contemplated such thoughts. She had always been cheerful and gentle, but one day she abruptly said, don't even think about dying. You still have time. After all, you're not an old man yet. I'll move you to the ground floor, and I'll sit by your bed day and night to make sure you don't do anything. Leonid felt a lump in his throat. After all, he couldn't talk to anyone about it, and no one would understand. Men only screamed during injuries or surgery. The rest of the time, they maintained their composure. But Marina had worked in the hospital for a while and witnessed the horrors of war. The wounded behaved like children. Sometimes they needed to be dealt with like babies, while other times a firm hand was required. The girl started taking care of Leonid, and since then, she never raised her voice at him. Patiently restoring his will to live, she grew fond of him. She was incredibly beautiful, and her character was such that it was impossible not to fall in love with her. Leonid was lucky that Marina eventually became his wife. 
He couldn't believe that such a beauty could love him and take on such a burden for a lifetime. Living with a colleague, he couldn't refuse that anymore. Even if he left, he would suffer for the rest of his life. The man loved, respected, and was slightly afraid of his petite wife. By her side, he felt like a complete man, willing to move mountains for the well-being of their family. He didn't drown his sorrows or lose hope, like many in his situation. The couple was able to afford prosthetics, and Marina helped Leonid adjust to them. She was always delighted by even the smallest successes. Undeterred, Leonid regained his footing and pursued higher education. Later, he found work as an agronomist in his hometown. Marina became a respected specialist, and many sought her advice. He was respected, loved, and people simply dropped by for a visit. Marina baked delicious pies, and neighbors gathered for tea to savor the aroma In their marriage, of fresh Leonid baked and Marina had a son, Ilya, who was healthy and stubborn like his mother, and lively like his father. The couple also maintained a beehive and had a standard household with cows, geese, and chickens. By rural standards, their family could be considered prosperous. You're growing up so handsome. The neighbors would tell Marina, already looking for potential suitors for their daughters. Ilya was very similar to his father and always actively helped in the garden. He wanted to join the paratroopers and follow in his father's footsteps. Leonid supported his desire, although he knew that the army was still far away. After being conscripted, Ilya became interested in skydiving. He became strong and resilient. Ilya was always honest and didn't bend to anyone. He earned the respect of his comrades and his father, not bringing shame to them. When he returned home in his new military uniform, everything was as it should be. His parents were overjoyed to see their son, and his determination impressed them. Sorry, but I need to sort out my life. It's not such a small task, Ilya said after the first dinner with his family. I won't stay in the village forever, no matter how much I love it here. I want to see more of the world. Why do you need that city, son? You always loved nature, Leonid asked. Is there a girl waiting for you there? No, dad, not yet. But it's time for me to start building my future. I'll stay with you for a little longer, and then I'll go find my place. Don't worry about me. You're right, you're already grown up and can make your own decisions. You can't live with your parents forever. You need to have your own corner, too. Move to the city or find a job, just like I joined the police. You've been accepted into the rapid response squad with strong guys like yourself. Two years have passed since then, and during that time, Leon had buried his beloved wife and managed the household alone. He was passionate about beekeeping, and his diverse and delicious honey became known throughout the region. He had a new car, which he affectionately called Vasca. It looked brand new. Liana drove out of the garage and headed to the district center to visit a friend and taste his linden honey. He was bored of being constantly alone and wanted to chat with someone and reminisce about the old days. The men didn't want to leave before their son, whom they considered their own, they had already noticed from a distance that the guys from the setup were tough, rude, and stubborn. They usually targeted pensioners who would immediately get confused and frightened in such situations, easily parting with their money to avoid further trouble. The scammers were compassionate people and considered themselves guilty, wanting to resolve the incident quickly. With these thoughts in mind, the scammer stood on the road, waiting for a suitable victim. Leonid seemed to be the perfect candidate for their mischief. They cut him off with their BMW and immediately rushed onto the road, shouting about changing a tire. They only grazed the bumper, 
but they started yelling as if the damage was worth a million. What, old man, can't you see where you're going? Look what you've done to my car. Do you even know how much it's worth? How much will the repairs cost? One of them began to rant, but the man was still shocked by what had happened. He didn't understand where they came from and why they were accusing him. Young men, you jumped in front of my car yourselves. How could I, in my little swallow, hit you like that? You need to be more careful, he replied, staring at the scammers. I need to be more careful, and I'll teach you a lesson in attentiveness right now. Come on, get out of your carriage, get your wallet out. How much do you have there? Come on, we won't look at how much you have. We'll take everything we need. The guys opened the door like vultures, and Leonid stepped out. They immediately noticed his legs and burst into laughter. It hurt him, even though he was glad that he had spent his life in a wheelchair, but such behavior was offensive to him. Are you pirates from Treasure Island? We haven't encountered such a thing before, the scoundrels chuckled. Get the money, old man, before we twist your legs off. Leonid was angry, but he knew he wasn't the same guy who fought in Afghanistan. He couldn't handle them on his own, but he still tried to resist, getting back in the car and driving away. The young scammers quickly subdued him and even humiliated him. They threw him down on the ground. Leonid, with his prosthetic legs, was not as agile, so he decided to use a trick. Listen, spare me. I have a little money with me, just pennies. I can call my son. Look, I have a student. He's studying education, a modest and intelligent boy. Don't touch him, just. He'll bring the money, and that's it. He's not good with fists, but he's a brainiac. All We've right, already call wasted him enough time now. on you, the man said, rubbing his hands together. They were already anticipating the encounter with the son, a bookworm. Although they promised not to touch the old man's kid, they still felt obliged to give him a couple of slaps. In the end, they watched as Leonid got up and called his son. Son, I need your help, he reluctantly asked Ilya. Leonid, and at that moment, Pavel didn't notice a car approaching. But we decided not to intervene to avoid unnecessary commotion. Bring the money. The man mentioned an approximate amount that could satisfy the scammer's appetites and also serve as a signal to his son about the danger. I'm waiting for you. Everything is fine. They haven't done anything to you. They'll be here soon. Hold on. Let them just try to touch you. Endure it. Twenty minutes after the scratch on the BMW, the scammers grew bored and started pestering Leonid with questions. Just then, a four-wheel drive vehicle pulled up, and Ilya, along with his four sturdy comrades from the Rapid Response Unit, stepped out. The scoundrels immediately became flustered and decided to quietly retreat to their car and make their escape. Well, stand there, you scumbags. You're the ones who ran into him, Ilya growled, equating himself with them. And it's a good thing we didn't lay a finger on him, guys. Trust us, we don't need any trouble. That scratch is nothing. We don't want anything from him. I said, winking at my friends, and they pounced on the scammers. They received a beating for their actions, and the villains didn't dare object. My comrades unleashed their fury while I instructed them to exercise restraint. That's enough of this chaos, commanded Leonid, and the fighters halted. Let's take their car. Why waste our energy on throwing punches? Let them spend their time more productively, I suggested. At first, the scammers were relieved, but they had no idea what awaited them. A whole hectare of uncultivated land on Asiv's plot. Here you go, young man. Leon had embraced Ilya when our friends took the scoundrels away. I no longer have the strength to deal with such lawlifes. Always call me if you ever encounter such trouble. 
I won't let anything harm you. So where were you heading? I was going to Vladimir's. Wanted to have a talk, Ilya replied. Since we're together now, let's go there together. The Russian team, the men, the village of Vaku, and a visit to Marina's grave were on their agenda. Afterward, Leonid finally went to visit his friend in the district center. The longtime friends sat late into the night, discussing both trivial matters and important topics. They thanked the heavens for giving them children who now protected their elders. If you enjoyed the story, please support me with a thumbs up. And to stay updated on the release of new interesting stories, click the notification bell when you subscribe. Wishing you all the best.